It's that time of year again. Tubishra, the birthday of the trees. What does that even mean? Were all the trees born on the same day? And anyway, who cares? Why should we even celebrate the birthday of trees? It's time for the Aleph Beta Tubishvat Crash Course. Let's start from the beginning. What does the name Tubishvat even mean? Don't go looking for the word Tu in a Hebrew English dictionary because Tet Vav is actually an acronym. It's 15 in Hebrew. So, Tu Bishvat means the 15th day of the month of Shvat. So, what's so great about the 15th of Shvat? Well, according to the Talmud, it's the beginning of the agricultural year for the trees. Just as a school year starts in September and businesses have their own fiscal years, Tu Bishvat is the beginning of the tree year. But why do we even need a tree year? I'm so glad you asked. In Biblical Jewish law, there are a bunch of guidelines that apply to fruit, especially in the land of Israel. We give truma, the gift offering to the priests, which is about 1 50th of our produce. There's maaser, tithes, which is 10% given to the Levites. And then there's orla, the prohibition to eat a tree's fruit for its first three years. And fruit from the fourth year must be eaten in Jerusalem. From the fifth year and on, the fruit can be eaten anywhere. So, when keeping these laws, knowing a tree's age is actually quite important. Which is where Tu Bishvat comes in. Tu Bishvat marks the new year. It's a cutoff. If a tree's fruits begin to ripen, say, a month before Tu Bishvat, well, once Tu Bishvat rolls around, now it's considered to be in its second year, even though it's only existed for a month. If it ripens a month after Tu Bishvat, then it's got to wait 11 months until the next Tu Bishvat before it starts its second year. It's kind of like filing taxes. If you start a job in October of 2015, you still have to fill out your tax form for 2015 at the end of the year, even though it's only been two months. You don't wait until October of 2016. But why is the 15th of Shvat the cutoff? That feels so arbitrary. But actually, it makes a lot of sense. The calendar new year starts in the Hebrew month of Tishrei, and the rainy season begins shortly afterwards, about October time. By the 15th of Shvat, about four months later, most of the season's rain will already have fallen, and that's when the year's very first fruits begin to ripen. So anything that begins to ripen after Tu Bishvat is considered to be a product of that year's rain. Anything before then is considered to be a product of last year's rain. So that's Tu Bishvat. And we have to wonder, why in the world do we celebrate the beginning of the tree's agricultural year? Well, that may have to do with the reason behind all those agricultural laws to begin with. Each of the laws have their own reasons, but at their core, we think that they're all about a very similar theme, recognition of God as the Creator. For example, take a look at Nachmanides' reason for Orla. As we mentioned, the fruit from the tree's fourth year is eaten in Jerusalem, with God, so to say. But trees don't actually produce their best fruit during their first three years. Orla teaches us to hold off for the first three years, so that when we do go to Jerusalem, when we thank and appreciate God for the fruit that we have and eat it, so to say, with God, we do it with the very best. Truma and Maaser serve very similar roles. Even though we technically give them to the priests and Levites directly, the Torah is clear that we're symbolically giving them to God, and God then takes the produce and gives them to the priests and Levites. Giving our fruit to God is acknowledging that everything we have is really from Him, and He chooses what to do with it. And at the end of the day, supporting the priests and Levites with a part of our produce is our way of showing appreciation for their work on behalf of the nation. Perhaps it's both of these themes that we celebrate on Tu Bishvat. At the beginning of the new agricultural year of the trees, we show our appreciation to God by recognizing Him as the source of trees and of food in general. We come together as a community to sing, celebrate the land of Israel, its trees, its fruit, and of course, to eat. This year, as we celebrate Tu Bishvat, let us take a moment to recognize God as the source of everything we have, to use this spring 
this new year for the trees as a new year, a new beginning for us all.